If I were to ask you, how do you keep things in motion? What would you say? You might say we have to keep pushing or pulling on that object. A push or a pull is called a force. So in other words, we need to keep applying a force on an object. And if I asked you, why do you think so? You might say this is from your daily experience. For example, this chair is not moving right now. If I have to make it move, I have to keep on pulling on it. Or I have to keep pushing on it. If I stop pushing or pulling on it, look, it stops moving. And there you go. A force is needed to keep this chair in motion. Without a force, this chair naturally comes to a stop. Right? Well, what if I told you that this was wrong? Would you believe me? I'm guessing no, because you just proved it with an experiment. And so I guess the goal of this video is to convince you that this is wrong, or at least to make you rethink about this statement. And we'll do that by using the example of carom. Suppose we want to make this striker move on this carom board. What should we do? Well, again, you might say we need to keep pushing it. We need to push it to move it. But let's say instead of pushing it gently, we give it a strike. You know what happens. The striker will move some distance and it'll come to a stop. Let's look at that again, this time in slow motion. What we see is when our finger touches that striker, it pushes that striker, making it move. But as the striker loses contact from my finger, I stop pushing it. There's no longer a push anymore. And what we are seeing after that is that the striker slows down, slows down, and eventually comes to a stop. And at this point, you might say, ha, I told you so. You have to keep pushing it in order to keep it moving. If you stop pushing it, then it'll come to a stop. Things have a natural tendency to come to a stop. Okay, but let's do something. Let's add some powder to the surface and repeat the experiment. Again, you might know what happens in this case, right? Now if I strike with pretty much the same force as before, it goes much further before coming to a stop. And if I ask why it traveled farther this time, you might say, well, because we added powder, the surface became smoother, and things slide farther on smooth surfaces. But what if I ask you why? Why do things slide further on smooth surfaces? I mean, if the natural tendency of an object is to come to rest, why does that depend on how smooth the surface is? Huh? Think about that. Why does the surface matter? This is where a man named Galileo Galilei came up with a crazy idea. He thought that maybe this piece is not stopping because of its natural state. He thought maybe this rough surface is forcing it to stop. Okay, here's what I mean. If we go back to before adding the powder, once I strike this blue piece, it gets, it sets in motion. And now Galileo is thinking maybe the surface itself starts pushing this blue piece in the opposite direction, opposing its motion. And maybe it's this force that slows it down and eventually makes it stop. This is just like how when there is an uncontrollable train moving, Superman comes in, pushes the train in the opposite direction, slows it down, makes it stop, and saves the day. Similarly, Galileo thought it is this force that's opposing its motion and makes it stop. And you might even know the name of this force. Today we call it friction. And if we understand how friction works, maybe we can explain this entire scenario. So let's quickly look at how friction works. To figure out friction, we need to look carefully at the surface where the striker meets the board. You see, although these surfaces look very smooth to our eyes, at the microscopic levels, they aren't smooth at all. So if we could zoom in over here, the surfaces might look somewhat like this. These mountains and valleys are just too small for our eyes to make out, and therefore it looks smooth to us. But as this striker moves on the board, notice because of the unevenness, 
it causes obstruction. And it is this obstruction which we call friction. Okay, but what happens when we add powder? You see, powder particles are so small, they can fill in these gaps and smoothen it out. Ah, now because the surfaces are much smoother than before, the striker can slide with much lesser obstruction. And that means friction reduces. So if we come back to our board, according to Galileo, when I strike this coin, it is friction that is opposing the motion and stopping it. Since friction is the culprit for stopping this coin, when we add powder to the surface, the surface gets smoother and it's the friction that decreases. That's the change, that's the effect of smoothing the surfaces. And since the friction decreases, the opposing force decreases, this means now it is harder to stop the coin and as a result, the coin travels farther before coming to a stop. So this means, logically, as I make the surface smoother and smoother, our coin will travel farther and farther before stopping, uh, given that our carom board is, say, big enough. And now, this is the big moment, this is the big, big Galileo moment, what if we made this surface perfectly smooth? What happens then? Imagine we somehow made this board perfectly smooth and gave it a tap. What happens now? Well, now that our board is perfectly smooth, that coin will never stop. It will keep moving forever. Of course, provided that our board is super, super big. And now Galileo would look at this and say, look, look, things in motion stay in motion. And so, to keep things in motion, you don't need to push or pull on them. They have a natural tendency to stay in motion. And why don't we see this in our daily life? Because of friction. Because friction always acts in the opposite direction of the motion and makes it stop. So it's the friction that's the culprit that makes everything stop. Even the chair, example that we saw earlier, same case. If there was no friction, and if you stop pushing on it, that chair would keep moving forever. But it's the friction that opposes things and makes everything come to a stop. So the natural state of moving things is to keep moving. Now you may want to defend this and you might say, wait, 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 wait. But initially the striker was at rest and you had to put a force on it to start making it move, right? So that way force is needed to start motion. Yeah, but now I can also say a force is needed to stop the motion. And the only reason why things around us are at always, most of the times, are at rest is because of friction, because friction opposes motion and makes them come to a stop. In the absence of friction, there is no reason for things to be at rest. Things might as well be in motion. And so the natural state of things in the absence of forces is either rest or in motion. And if you find this hard to digest, and if you find this a little confusing, then you are not alone, my friend. Because humanity took thousands of years to figure this out. So please take your time. And I'll tell you what, what helps me is to think about celestial things, like the planets or the stars or the galaxies. They are in perpetual motion. Yes, their motion is a little complicated because there are forces acting on them, but they are always moving. Why don't they stop? Well, because things in motion tend to stay in motion. And a final question that we might have is, what does a force do? I mean, we just saw a force doesn't keep things in motion, then what does it do? Well, like we saw, a force can start motion. In other words, a force can speed up things. And like in the case of friction, force can also slow down things and stop the motion. Turns out that force can also change direction of motion, but don't worry too much about that. So in general, we can say force can accelerate things. That's right, in the absence of forces, if objects are moving, they will move with a constant speed in a straight line. But if you want to accelerate that body, then you need to put a force on them. And so what did we learn in this video? 
we saw that a man named Galileo looked at simple experiments, well, not carom maybe, but other things. He looked at them carefully and came up with a revolutionary idea that things in motion have a natural tendency to stay in motion. You don't need to keep pushing or pulling on them to keep them in motion. And what does a push or pull do? What does a force do? Well, a force in general speeds up or slows down things, or in general, it accelerates things.